every year when we uh, read these uh, readings of the, uh, the, tr the transfiguration of our Lord on the mountain, I'm intrigued by this verse that we just heard that after everything they saw they saw no one anymore except Jesus alone just um, strikes a chord within me that it is a good reminder that in in the midst of the business of our life in the midst of everything we do and we're distracted by it is an amazing reminder that to see uh, no one anymore except Jesus alone. Um, today, um, I will just open my heart and, and, and talk about a few things that has been um, around us for the last two or three weeks in terms of um, some and events affecting the church in Egypt and of course affecting us here um, and I mentioned briefly last week, it's, it, it was about the unfortunate uh, death or uh, murder of um, Bishop uh, Amba Epiphanius. And um, unfortunately on Facebook, there are many, many, many groups and pages have started to um, talk and accuse and distract the people from the main issue. So I'll just use the reading of this morning that we should see no one anymore except Jesus to, to just comment and uh, just to help us get through this time and whatever may happen in the future. Peter, as he is, we know that he is a very enthusiastic person. He is full of um, zeal and he wants to do everything for everyone. So we just heard that he saw Elijah and Moses standing with Christ and he said, wow, this is a historic moment. It's amazing to be here. What can I do for you? He was so um, taken by the event and, and by the great people whom he had uh, heard about and read about, Moses the Great and, and Elijah the Great Prophet. But then suddenly, um, after as, as, as a very strong response from heaven, that Peter paused a little bit. It's not about who is around Christ. It's about him alone. So the voice came, this is my son, listen to him. And then after this voice uh, kind of stopped, it sa said they saw no one except Jesus alone. The message here is that we need to free ourselves from unhealthy attachments. As human beings, we tend to like to belong, belong to people, to leaders, to bishops, to priests, to groups. There's a human tendency to form an identity around something, around someone. And because it is very easy to relate to a human being or to a group of people, we cling to whatever group that we like. And we miss the point. We miss the point that leaders in our life, especially leaders in the church or spiritual leaders in general, they are a means to an end. They are um, a sign on the road to guide me to my final destination. So we find ourselves um, really so busy with who is right and who is wrong busy who is more popular and who is not, um, busy with which church is better than the other church, whether on a um, 
level of Orthodox, Catholic, Protestants, denominations, uh, and we tend to hear every time the differences between this church and that church. And we grew up to form this identity about us being the right church, being the right people, being the right group. It's good because we like to hear that we belong to the right group and it gives us a sense of identity. But seldom that we talk about Christ. We talk about churches, but we don't talk about Christ. And we think that we know everything about God that you know, others do not know. And therefore, we find ourselves in this bubble, in this box. It is a very tight box. You can't let people out, and you can't let people in. So we grow, judging, comparing, and forming an identity about an idea or about a person. Even when we make comparison on the, on the local level between two or three uh, you know, churches in the same town, we say, oh, this, ch this you know, church is more busy than this church, therefore it must be a successful church. Or we just tend to talk about whose church is doing what. And we miss on the point of the relationship with God that people are forming. Paul faced the same um, problem in Corinthians. Let me bring it to you here. Or if you want to use your Bible, um, it's from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10. He said that, now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord, that you all speak the same thing and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be perfectly joined together, perfectly joined together in mind and in the same judgment. It's been declared to me concerning you that there are some contentions among you. Now I say this, that Will each of you say, I am of Paul, I am of Apollos, or I am of Cephas, or I am of you know, Christ? Again, this tendency to belong to someone. And unfortunately, in this city, they tend to belong to the people who ministered Christ to them. So they say, I am with Paul's group. I am with Apollos' group. No, I am with Peter's group. But then Christ was forgotten. And then Paul, St. Paul is, his, is ask, asking, is Christ divided? Was Paul or Peter or Apollos or any of your servants? And <clears throat> if you think today about a certain leader that you like, a bishop or a priest, he, ha, has he been crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul. So again, psychologically and socially, there's a human need and tendency to belong. And we take sides. And these unhealthy attachments may result in codependency. I can't live without listening to Abuna's so-and-so sermons. Every day I have to listen to one of his sermons. I have to ask Ambaso and so about everything in my life. Even people ask monks and bishops about what to name their babies. So become, so we tend to form these unhealthy attachments to people. 
and we are becoming unable to differentiate, which means being a healthy individual, knowing how to discern, knowing how to judge, using the advice of many people, but at the end, you can discern what you want for yourself. And especially on, on the yeah, spiritual level, it is unhealthy and destroys love. The disciples faced this uh, dilemma. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 9, from verse 46. Again, then a dispute arose among them, which is the greatest? Who is more popular, Peter or Paul? Paul was not uh, there yet, but Peter, James, John, even Judas, who was the greatest? And Jesus perceiving the thought of their heart took it to a little child and set him by him. And then the message was, the least among you will be the greatest. But not enough. John, even John, John that we call the beloved, but he learned love later. But in this forming years, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him. Why? <laughs> because he does not follow with us. See, he's not from our group. Although he was casting demons in Jesus' name. But we told him, don't do this again because you're not from us. This is John, John the Beloved, who thought later that uh, uh, um, um, if, he, if you hate your brother, therefore you, you do not love God. But Jesus said, to him, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. Again, if he is using the name of Jesus to heal and to cast demons and to worship, don't forbid him. He is on our side. He is not destroying. Not enough. Another incident can happen. Jesus going to Jerusalem, and, and he sent messengers to um, before his face and they went to Samaria to prepare for him but the people of this yes, Samaritan village did not receive him because his face was set for the journey of, of Jerusalem so these people refused to, to see Christ so again disciples James and John John just heard that hey you, you can't forbid people as long as they are um, um, yeah, claiming the, the, my name. James and John saw this and he said, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and consume them just as Elijah did James and John? Wanted yeah, Christ to send fire and people because they, they, they just didn't listen to them. But he turned and rebuked them and said, you do not know what manner of spirit you are for the son of man did not come to destroy people, did not come to divide people, but he came that he might save them. Disciples were human beings and we too are human beings we like to belong we like to have an identity about something about someone but the big reminder this yeah, morning even if you see Elijah and Moses see no one except Jesus alone I read um, um, a short uh, it was like um, uh, a saying or like a story and we do it yeah, all the time when you go to the beach and you sit by, on the sand by the beach, uh, you tend to look around and you see everybody in their own clothes, in their own colors, in their own sizes, 
the big, the small, uh, the, um, the ugly swimwear, the good swimwear, and we just to <laughs> see every difference as long as we are together on the beach. But if you go a little bit inside the water and go deeper a little bit, this difference may start to disappear, especially if the same people yani, go with you in this water. And then you go deeper and deeper and deeper all the way until you're, you're just surrounded by water. You are in the deep of that yani, ocean. Do you see any differences? Do you see any different sizes, different colors? No, because you're so far away from the surface, from the beach, and you are so consumed and you are absorbed by this enormous body of water. You see no differences. You see no one except the water around you. It is the same. When we are so living on, on the surface of life, we are so, when we are very shallow in our relationship with Christ, we tend to see the differences between people, who is right, who is wrong, who is my way, who is not my way, and we tend to divide and judge and point fingers because we're so far away from the center and the point of worship. But when you go into the deep, and if, if you remember Jesus told Peter, if you want to catch fish, go into the depth, go into the deep. When we go into the deep of our relationship with Christ and see no one except him, despite our differences, despite our mood changes, we tend to love and accept every one because we are so busy with looking at Christ and by looking at Christ we absorb his way of looking at people we understand how he judges how he loves how he makes no differences between people and this is what we need in the coming time on the church level and on the local level here in, in, in our um, small ch church, and also in our lives. Think about who you belong to. Think about who do you fight for. Do you fight for another human being, or an idea, or a group, because you just think that it is the right one? Have you yeah, considered expanding your horizon reading more, knowing more, meeting more people? Can you think about really going into a deeper relationship with God so, so that you will see no one anymore except him? People tend to, uh, um, in the gospel, also they wanted to put Jesus in a box. If, if you remember, he was preaching in a house and people told him, you just look, your, <clears throat> your mother and, you, and your brothers are outside asking for you. And Jesus, and Jesus looked at them and said, you know, right? Who is my mother? Who are my brethren? I tell you, he or she who does the will of God is my mother, is my brother, and is my sister. Even if we want to keep Jesus in our little box, he wouldn't. And he is telling us, no, don't put me in your box. Everyone who does the will of God, who, who prays in the name of, of Christ, is my mother and my son and my brother. St. Paul told us that in first. Uh, Corinthians chapter 13, and now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of, of these is love. Why? Faith will come to an end once we obtain what we 
couldn't see once we arrive there. Hope will also end once we get what we want. But what would remain is love. And he is love. My hope is that um, the, the coming times are about the individual, not about which group you belong to. About your individual path, not which church you go to. Not who is right, who is yeah, wrong according to Facebook or according to what you hear every day. Start this path of getting into the depth. Once you get there, all, all, all the differences will melt, will disappear, and you will become more mature. You will grow in his knowledge. Once you have his eyes, his thoughts, his worldview, you become more loving and tender and accepting. Accepting does not mean approving, by the way, because we have a problem with the word acceptance. I, I might not approve the actions of some people, but I have to accept them based on the goodness that is within them, because they are the image of God. See no one anymore except Jesus alone. To him all glory forever. Amen.